in the city of Boulder, Colorado, on Boulder Creek, there stands a memorial to Gilbert F. White. Known by many as the father of floodplain management, Gilbert F. White was a professor at the University of Colorado, Boulder, and a much beloved and influential leader in the world environmental movement. Dr. White's lifelong work was based on the principle that people can live in harmony with their environment, including inevitable extremes such as flood. The Gilbert F. White Memorial was dedicated on July the 17th, 2011. The week before the dedication, the Natural Hazard Center of the University of Colorado Boulder held their annual conference, which was initiated by Gilbert White. The Natural Hazard Mitigation Association took the opportunity to visit with Gilbert White's daughter, Mary B. White, so that she could share some of the memories of her father's life and to explain how the memorial came to be placed on Boulder Creek. Well, I think my mother met my father at the um, Florida Meeting House in, in Washington, D.C., and she was were interested in labor uh, relations, and she just finished Vassar, and she and my father had both become um, pacifists and did not believe in what was going on in Europe and in the war. And um, so that was one bond, but she also wanted Gilbert to come out with her and build adobe houses in Arizona. And she was very interested in natural resources, and I think that was a, another bond. So they had three, and also she loved the natural environment. Um, she didn't have a degree in ge geography, but she kept working with Gilbert, and he kept kind of coaxing her into directions so that they eventually wrote um, drawers of water together about domestic water use in, in East Africa. And uh, she was very active in local politics. And I think that was something Gilbert was working on the national and international scale, and it was hard for him to be home for some of the meetings. And so it was very satisfying that they had this kind of partnership, but they worked in different levels of policy making. But the memorial project for Gilbert came out of um, talking to him and writing letters to the city council when he was 90 saying don't build in the floodplain anymore we hear you have another project in the floodplain why are you considering this and thinking how can an artist somebody who's interested in visual form do something to contribute to this world of science and knowledge historical knowledge really it's about cultural memory I think and so I actually made a little model, which I showed Gilbert. So Gilbert and I talked off and on about developers building on the floodplain in Boulder. After all these years, here is a nationally known floodplain specialist, and his city where he lived still hadn't completely listened to him. And they made a lot of changes. He'd been able to convince the city to start buying out some of the property to open up the creek, been a lot of changes, but still there's constantly you sort of keeping the, the the thumb in the dam. There'd be another developer who'd come say, "Hey, you know, let's use that space. It looks it's clear. Let's build a convention center on it." In fact, there's already there's a convention center plan right now, right off Boulder Creek. Um, so, I was taking an architecture class, and and I came home with a little model to show Gilbert, and I said, well, you know, why don't we show them what 18 feet high is? That's going to be the height approximate of a severe extreme uh, event. And uh, he said, oh, that's not a bad idea. So I talked to Alan Taylor, who was the floodplain manager, retired at the time, and he and Marshall Frecht, who's the uh, flood uh, video artist, flood filmmaker, came down to the creek and we looked for a site. And then Ad Gilbert passed away that year. And a uh, committee um, was formed because the mayor asked uh, the committee to put together a plaque for Gilbert on Boulder Creek. And the committee came to me, and Alan was on the committee, and said, 
you know, wouldn't it be better to have something educational? Gilbert wouldn't really approve of a plaque on Boulder Creek for him. Couldn't we do something with flood education? And what about that model that you had? So that was the start of the uh, project. And I think it's been blessed because he, Gilbert actually thought it wasn't a bad idea. So it wasn't something that came up after he was gone. And my intent was to make something that was absolutely beautiful and stunning and bold that would bring people to look at it. And then they would have, after reading the signage, have this kind of aha moment and understand that something very seriously awful might happen if it reached the big Thompson level. So I somehow I think that some of the strongest art that I've seen has to do with that kind of shift where you attracted to an image some in one way and then you suddenly realize that there's another aspect to it. Um, so there now are there two signs, Clancy Phillips Baum and uh, David Butler, who are two very accomplished flood experts in their own right. Um, Clancy's floodplain manager, who was Gilbert's graduate student, and David Butler was the editor of the National Hazards Observer for many years. So they put together the signage and gave it to the city, who then interpreted it with their graphic designer. So I think the signage is very important. So we're, we're working on all the senses. We're working on the visual sense of reading the signs. We're working on the kinesthetic sense of walking down and standing by this very tall thing and thinking, hmm, if there's a flood, I better not be in this area. And then where people can touch it, it's not, you know, it's not roped off. So um, I'm trying to find as many senses as possible to have people feel the effects of what might happen, which I think is, in a way, we're, we're, we're just contributing to flood education. Do you think it will survive that flood? Well, the foundation is approximately, I'm, I'm six, I'm almost seven feet broad, seven by seven by ten, and it's filled with concrete, and it's got a metal structure which is rebarred down through, so the weight, most of the weight is underneath the ground. The engineers think that it will survive. And it's made in sections so that if it, and it's actually a little bit flexible. So we think that if there's some debris or something, it's likely to kind of bend a little bit and let the debris go past it. Um, we did have an engineer go through it. The city, it took basically five years to get the approval. We had to go through the city council, through the engineering department, through the parks and rec department, um, the uh, um, planning department and so the en the engineering may have been good enough you know we, we who knows it costs quite a bit of money uh, you how did you afford this well it cost um, we projected a hundred thousand dollars and it cost us one hundred and twenty thousand and we fundraised and thanks to many <laughs> many individuals I think over three hundred and fifty individuals and the um, Association for Floodplain Management and the Foundation for Floodplain Management were major donors for it. We're very, very thankful to them. Actually, there are two artists involved. I'm not the only one. I mean, this whole project was, I think, the way Gilbert might have liked it. It was a very collaborative project. So Elizabeth Black, who is a local artist, did a lot of the graphics for the original fundraising. And uh, she had had the original idea of putting markers around the city that were bronze markers showing the 500 and 100 year level. The city would not approve them. Business owners did not want them. So she was happy that we went, we were pushing for an idea even if it wasn't the original one. And um, then Marshall Freck, the flood uh, filmmaker, was also on the committee. And then Christian Mueller, who'd done three projects for the city of Boulder, three or four um, stone projects. And so he was really the project manager in terms of the foundation, putting the stonework on the bottom, and orchestrating the whole process of putting it together. 
So there are actually four artists on the project. Then we had um, Clancy and David and Kathleen Turney from the Hazard Center and Diane Smith and Oakley Thorne, who's a Rudgeon Ecology Center, and Ken and Ruth Wright, who own an engineering firm in Boulder that works with water. So it was very collaborative. So my glass part was just part of a very much bigger project. I think that people have responded. Um, I've walked along the creek, or I've been working on the project, and people stop, and they look, and they look up, and then they read the signage, which is brand new. And I think the signage is extremely helpful. Um, and then they think, well, shall I get in my car? Or something. You know, they, they ask themselves out loud a question. And we, um, I noticed there's a barcode on the creek that's a little barcode that's strapped onto the one of the railings. And if you use your smartphone, it'll tell you the, the flow rate of the creek because there's a little sensor and there's a monitor right down on that site, which will, it runs the flow rate up through this radio frequency, which goes up to the city building over across the bridge. So I hope that it becomes a little sort of science center where, you know, there's a, there's a more information about the creek because like people, when they understand nature, then they're more willing to accept its forces.